Hello everyone. Now that we've downloaded JASP, I wanted to go through a couple of exercises to dig a little deeper than the introductory videos have, have shown you, show you a few more things. Um, <clears throat> as you see, I'm on the main JASP screen. I've started the application. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to bring a data file in and I'm going to kind of talk you through a process of sort of looking at what the data file is telling me. And then I want to go through the process of generating some visualizations. Um, visualizations, if you've read uh, the announcements for this particular uh, module, visualizations are very important in data mining. So we can, you know, create great knowledge through data mining. But if we don't share that knowledge with those who have the power and influence to make something of it, then it's kind of all for naught. So I will go through the visualization pieces uh, briefly and show you how you can create visualizations, how you can take those visualizations and copy them and then be able to drop them into, say, a, a Microsoft Word document or some other document so that you could put them together in a report or a report format and share them with others. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to go up to the pancake up here, which allows me to get to my menus. The only options that are available are open because I don't have any files open or preferences in about. Well, I'm going to go to open. Under open, I have recent files. JASP will keep a list of the files that you've most recently opened and allow you to get back to those easily. You can also search your computer to find files, your computer or your network, to find files that you can use. Or you can go to the Open Science Framework, which we're not going to use in this class. Um, you're welcome to read about it if you like, but this is the last time I'll talk about it and we're not going to do anything with it. Or you can go to their data library. JASP comes with a really nice data library. And the way that they organize this is they organize it in uh, by tools. So the first one is books. Those are books that you can look at that have to do with uh, using JASP. The second one is descriptives, and that's basically descriptive statistics. And it is a single data source that allows you to go in and see how you can use things like mean, median, mode, standard deviation, and the like. And then number two is t-tests, number three is ANOVA, number four is regression. We will use all of those in this class. Um, the one I'm actually going to pull from, though, is from regression. We're not going to do regression today. I'm just going to use the file because the file is interesting. So if I click on regression, it allows me to pick a file. And I'm going to pick this Adam Sandler file. It's a simple little file, and I'll tell you a little bit about what it does. But first, there's two ways you can pull down each of these files. If you pull down the one that has the green circle with a sort of JASP symbol in it, that will contain some analysis that has already been conducted. And it's a great way to learn how to do some of the, in this particular case, regression analysis, um, which, which would actually, considering this file, would be a great option for this file. We may do that actually when we get to regression. The non, or the, the icon without the green circle, is just the data itself. And so what I'm going to do is go ahead and click on that and open that up. What this file is, is it is four columns. And those four columns each have labels. We have year, we have freshness, we have box office, and we have movie title. I want you to pay attention to the icon that is next to each of these uh, titles, these column titles, column heads. The first three are all the same, and they're scale. It's, it's a little ruler. And basically what that means, it's the numeric value that has um, an order, right? So for example, zero to infinity um, is the order for all three of these. These are numeric values that we would use as normal numbers. There's also this icon over here, which is basically three circles, and the blue has a little tiny A in it. It's kind of hard to see, but it's there. Those are strings. Those are basically lists of characters that are not numeric. There are two other variables, variable types, one of which is a nominal variable. That is a numeric variable that the order doesn't matter. So for example, we could have five different classes. These are not grades, they're just classes, say five different types. Um, and we represent those with types one, two, three, four, five. Those numbers don't mean anything. They're just categories. So those would be called a nominal variable or a nominal categorical variable. And that has a symbol that looks very much like this three circle item here, but it is uh, it doesn't have the A. The fourth uh, type of variable that we have is called ordinal. And ordinal is also a numeric variable. It's, a, it's a, something that holds numbers. But in this particular case, the, the order of those numbers matters. 
So where we had class one, class two, class three, class four, class five, which is basically five different types of, say, fruit or something like that, that really the, the order doesn't matter. If we were to say grade one, grade two, grade three, grade four, grade, four, grade five, those are now an ordinal variable because they matter. The order matters. Their order is related to each other. It's kind of a subtle difference. Um, when you load data into JASP, JASP will look at the contents of each of the columns and make the best guess that it can as to the type of variable that it is. It's either going to be scale, it's going to be string, it's going to be nominal, or it's going to be ordinal, and it will do the best it can. You can change that if you need to, but for the most part, you're probably not going to have to. So that's what those little symbols mean right up next to the column heads. Now, what does this file contain? Well, it contains the year. These are movie releases. So you can tell that, tell that by the title on the fourth column. They're movie releases that Adam Sandler was featured in or starred in. So, and this is the year that they were released. And then we have two metrics. Um, there's an organization called Rotten Tomatoes, and Rotten Tomatoes will rank movies um, and give it a freshness score. And the higher the freshness score, the better they think the movie is. So you've got a freshness score for each one of these movies that came from Rotten Tomatoes. Then you've also got a box office gross. This is how much money the movie made at the box office. So the reason why this is being set up or being provided under the correlation data sets is because, or not correlation, regression data sets, is because we might try to use either box office or freshness to predict each other in this particular data file. But for now, we're not going to worry about that. We're just going to load up the file and do some stuff with it. So now that we have the data file loaded and we understand what it is, above here we have all of our tools. So we have descriptives. This are, these are descriptive statistics that we can use, things like mean, median, mode. You'll see what we're actually going to use that, so I'll, I'll talk about it more when we get there. T-tests allows us to, if we were to calculate an average of half of these and an average of another half of these, um, we could determine whether or not the averages are statistically significantly different. Um, ANOVA allows us to do basically t-test with more than two groups. And then there's mixed models, regression, frequencies, and factor, some of which we'll use in this class and some of which we won't. So we're going to go ahead and start with descriptives. And when we click on descriptives, it sets us up with this screen. It gives us all of our four fields. And we can now decide which of these four fields we want to use. So over here, it's given us the results, right? And descriptive statistics right now, we don't have anything in here because we haven't selected any of these fields. Down below, we have four different options. Some of this is determining what we see when we select fields, so that's statistics. Basic plots are just basic plots of the data that, that where it's going to show us kind of um, the most simple plots. The customizable tools or customizable plots are more advanced where we can actually put specific features into those plots. And then tables are other things that we probably won't do much with. So let's start with the very basic. We're going to say, well, we know what the freshness score is for each of those movies. So we're going to go ahead and click on that, and we're going to move that over to the variables. Okay, Freshness on variables, we have 31 valid data points. We have none that are missing. The mean is 0.272. The standard deviation is 0.201. The minimum is 0, and the maximum is 0.79. Right off the bat, I can see that you've got a mean of 0.272, and you've got a standard deviation that's 0 0.2, 0.201. That's pretty close to the mean. That tells me there's quite a bit of variation, quite a bit of variation in that data set. So they range from you know, very low to very high. And then we see that also in the minimum and maximum. The minimum is 0, and the maximum is 0.79. And rotten, uh, apple, uh, rotten Tomatoes uh, freshness scores, I believe, range from 0 to 1. So there's a big spread there. So that's descriptive information. Um, now, what if we wanted to see more on the, in the way of descriptive information? Well, here you see all of the things that this results screen will show you. We have picked the number of valid. That's picked by default. The number of missing data points, also selected by default. For central tendency, we have mode, median, and mean, and we have selected only the mean. For dispersion, standard deviation, and distribution, there are various tests that we can use to tell us more information about the data sets. This is getting very statistics oriented, and I don't really want to go into it. I don't want to spend a whole lot of time on things like skewness, kurtosis, that kind of thing. Um, 
we can do things like interquartile range. We can do things of range. Um, if we need to, we will, um, but for now, we won't. We can go to quartiles and enter quartiles, and it will give us the 75th percentile, the 50, 50th percentile, and 75th percentile. We can add in median and mode if we choose. It's just this statistics uh, section allows us to see what we're going to see as far as the types of descriptive statistics that we want to look at. When we go to basic plots, we can do distribution plots, we can do correlation plots, and then we can do interval plots, QQ plots, pie charts, or dot plots. Again, depends on what we want to do, what we want to see. Um, I'm really more interested in getting down to some of these customizable plots. So I'm going to close this out and go to customizable plots because now we're getting into stuff that's a little bit more interesting. And one of the things I'm really interested in is scatter plots. So I want to see scatter plots. Or maybe I want to look at a different kind of plot, like a histogram, and see if it would show me the histogram. I think I probably need to select different data in order to be able to make that work. So I'll go back up here and I will select the box office gross and add that over here. Now when I do that, note that it gives me all of the fields for box office gross as well. But what it also gives me, it gives me a scatter plot that plots box office gross against freshness score. And that's why the plots weren't coming up because I didn't have enough data selected. It can't basically do the customizable plots on just one field. It needed both fields. So they're both there now. And this tells me, let's look at, let's look at box office is telling me. Okay, so we have 31 data points, uh, none are invalid. The mode is 2.3 million. The median is 69,300,000. The mean is 78,206. When your median is lower than your mode, that means you probably have an outlier that is pulling things up, pulling your mean up. Um, standard deviation, 49,000 relative to 69, or 49 million relative to 69 million. That means there's a lot of scatter in the data. We've got a minimum of two, we've got a maximum of 162. That's probably your outlier right there that is pulling your mean higher than your median. And then we've got the 25th, 50th, and 75th percentile. One of the questions I might have about this data is I wanna know, uh, maybe I'm making an assumption. I'm making an assumption that the higher the freshness score, in other words, the, the better people felt the movie was, the more money it would make at the box office, which would tend to, have data points that would cluster a lot in the upper right hand corner, but we don't have those. That's not happening. And so that's a little bit of a problem because I, it's defeating my assumption. Well, let's see what we do have. What we really have is kind of a scattered mess. There's not a lot of real consistency about this. The one thing we can see is that we have movies where the freshness score is very low, which basically means people thought the movie was terrible, that made a lot of money. You know, that people went and saw and spent a lot of money on, or, well, relatively a lot of money. And then we have some where the score was very high as far as freshness score, um, and they didn't make quite so much money. And then there's like this big cluster sort of in the middle. So it's, it's uh, you do have, this is actually a little bit off. You do have the zero point here, and there are some movies that made almost no money and they have pretty low freshness scores. So this makes sense that there's a cluster of, of items down here that bad movie didn't make a lot of money, okay? So we can play with this all we want. Um, what we also can do is I can take the, I can go ahead and close out this customizable plot and I'm gonna close out the statistics. And maybe I wanna split this data into sections. So I'm going to try this. I don't know if this is going to work with this data set, but I'll try it anyway and go year and it's not going to work. Um, but if you had, for example, different categories, if you have a categorical variable and maybe it was like movies that were made in America, movies that were made in Europe, movies that were made in Australia, whatever, and you had kind of location to shoot, you could come down here and put it into split, have to be a categorical variable, and then it would split your data in by category and you'd be able to see all of the different distributions by category. We will definitely do that. Um, but just not with this data set. All right, so we've got a plot. Um, we've got some information that we learned about this data, what we've, what, we've, uh, what we've been able to discern from the data. And now what I wanna do is I wanna 
I want to be able to report that out in a report because remember I want to be able to sort of generate reports that allow me to say here's inf interesting information, interesting useful information about this plot. So if you come up to scatter plots, actually you can go to the box office plot, go to the plot itself and click on the down arrow, it gives you the option to copy it. And so you can go ahead and copy that and then you can paste that into another application such as Microsoft Word and put in your own narrative to sort of explain what you're seeing in the data set and give me an understanding of what this data has shown you. This is just one really small use of JASP. Um, I think by now you probably can see that there's a lot more options in each of these items over here on the left than we're ever gonna use. Again, this is not a statistics class, this is a data mining class. So from this data set, we mined out some information and are displaying it here in this plot that basically says what kind of pattern does freshness score have related to box office um, for Adam Sandler movies. Not, I mean, not earth shattering, not gonna really completely redefine the world, but it's still an interesting little piece of data. So I would go ahead and take this, grab it, copy it. I would put it into Word. I would put a narrative in there and that could be a you know, presented as a report. For this week, I'm going to give you an assignment. And the assignment is this. I'm gonna give you a file that is called Superstore. And it's right here. And it will be loaded in module two. And you can go ahead and bring that data in. Where did it go? Anyway, you can load it. It's loaded, probably loaded in the background. Okay. Well, promise, I promise you it does load. Um, and then you can start working on getting some information about what's in that file. And let's go through that. Let's see if I can actually bring that up again. Open Superstore. Okay, I'm going to close this. Don't save it. I'm going to try it again. All right, open, there it is. Okay, so it finally opened. This is a file that has 9,994 records and they are sales records. They are orders that customers have placed with the Superstore. You've got the order ID, you've got the order number, the shipping date, you've got the ship mode. And by the way, I'll give you a tip, the ship mode could be a very useful way of classifying the data. You've got customer ID, customer name, segment, country, region, city, state, another way to be able to segment out your data and determine if there's anything interesting or any interesting patterns that you see. And you can go on through the rest. So one of the things that I think is very interesting here is being able to see with these almost 10,000 records, if you can track sales trends across different states, if you can track sales trends across different products, which you've got product IDs already here, different regions, southwest, north, and central, so, and I'm just gonna give you one little tip. I'm gonna go ahead and pull this up in descriptives. And I wanna see, let's see, I wanna see sales. Here's sales, I'm gonna pull that over here. It's gonna give me all my descriptives. I've got 9,994 records. None of them are missing. I've got mean, standard deviation, minimum and maximum. And of course, if I wanna add any fields, I could come down to statistics and I could go ahead and, and select which ones I wanna add. But what I want to do is I want to see sales by region. So let's, meet, let's see if I can find the region. Here's region. Now, if I bring region over here, it ain't going to make a lot of sense because it's a it's a text field. It doesn't it doesn't care. It doesn't it's not going to give me an average. It's not going to give me a standard deviation. But I can split it. So now I'm going to split sales by region. And look what it did. It gave me central, east, south, and west. It gave me the all of the valid uh, fields out of 9,994 fields. I've got 2333 in central, 2848 east, 1620 in south, and 3203 in west. None of the fields are missing data. It's only looking at the sales field, by the way. I've got mean sales, so this gives me some information. 215 versus 238 versus 241 versus 226. They seem pretty flat and, and lean. Standard deviation is enormous, though, so we have huge scatter in this data. Okay, So just keep that in mind. 
and look at your minimums relative to your maximums. And there's a huge scatter right there. So that's just one piece of information. I could split sales across regions. I could split sales across states. I could, if I want to get down to the real uh, kind of deep detail, I could split it across cities. I could look at this data in a whole bunch of different ways. Now, as I've indicated in a previous announcement, most of the time when we do data mining, we actually have a question that we're asking. We have a question or a problem that we're solving. And we know what that is in our minds before we actually ask for our data. Otherwise, sometimes we don't know what data to ask for. In this particular case, I, you, you, can, you can come up with a hypothetical question, but what I really want you to do is I want you to find five interesting things about this data set. This, is, this could be one of them. Um, I hope you don't all resort to this one and use this one, but it could be one of them, sales by region. Um, and then describe what you see. Um, describe what the data are telling you. And then come up with four others um, and just you know, do the same thing. When I'm ready to go ahead and capture this, I can. Oops, pick the wrong one again. I can copy this and dump that into a Word doc and then provide some narrative that explains what the data are telling me. And then I can just go on to the next one and present this as a nicely formatted report. If you have any questions, go ahead and check in with your instructor. I will make the super stored data file, it's a CSV file, I'll make it available in module two. And your assignment will be also described in module two. Um, but you have to watch this video in order to have a real understanding of what your assignment is. So hopefully all of you will do that. Okay.